hey guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video we'll look at 15 different things we need to do once we install parrot os i'm on my uh, parrot os machine and uh, i have the terminal open here so let's begin by the first uh, thing that we need to do that's going to be updating the packages the system packages the command to do that is sudo apt update and that should update the packages once that's done it's saying that 201 packages can be upgraded so the next step is to upgrade the uh, system and to do that we'll use sudo apt upgrade dash y for yes just to and depending on the number of packages you need to upgrade it might take a minute so let me pause and come back once it's done so the upgrade is done so the next thing we we'll look at is uh, changing any default passwords. So if your machine came with any default passwords for any user, you need to change that. Best practice is to change is to change any default passwords. So if you're changing the password for the current user, I can check the current user using who am I. The user is Eno. Let's say there was a default password for this user and you needed to change the password, just use the command sudo passwd. It's going to ask you to put in the password and the new password we type the password and the password is updated if you had a different user you needed a, you needed to change the password for just use sudo pass wd and then the name of the user enter and then you change the password the next thing you'll need to do is to create a non-root user so let's see how we, we do that. And let's begin by checking what users we already have. We can check the, let's check uh, it's, it's. So let's use cat uh, it's as wd. And at the bottom here, we see we only have the user eno. Let's go ahead and create a new user. The command for creating a new user is sudo add user. Now let's call the user joe. Uh, it's asking for the password and we type the password press enter just to finish this I and let me clear this and if I repeat the command to look at the past WD file you see we have an, a new user called Joe here the other thing you might want to do is to add pseudo privileges for that new user and to do that we just need to add the user to the pseudo group command for doing that is sudo user mod dash a g uppercase g sudo the name of the group and then show the name of the user now if i check that group i'll use cat etc group i'll grab sudo the name of the group let me grab them grab and as you can see, we have the users Eno and Joe in the pseudo group. Let's clear this and then we'll look at the next thing we need to do. So the next thing we'll need to do is we need to check that we have a valid IP address and we have internet access. To do that, we can use the IP address command, which shows us any interfaces we have and any IP addresses. We have this address right here for this interface. To check for internet connectivity, you can use ping. Let's say count to and we'll ping google.com google and we're able to ping it. Now we can also check DNS. And to do that, just use NS lookup command. Then name of the website. And we can see here, this is our DNS server, the IP, the port, and we're able to resolve google.com to this IP. Now, if you needed to change information related to your IP address and DNS information, up here at the top, this icon, if you right click on it and go to edit connections, under wired connection, click on this setting icon and then go to IPv4 settings. And then you can change this to either use DHCP or manual. Right now I'm using manual and I have an IP that I put in here and two DNS servers that I put in here. So this is where you'll make the changes. So let's X out of this. 
The next item is to configure your time zone. And the command for doing that is sudo dpkg reconfigure tz data. And here you would need to use your arrow keys to select your area or country. Once you have the correct one, just use the arrow keys again and press enter. Again, same thing here, arrow keys, press enter. And we have the time zone or the, we have the time zones showing and the local time showing as well. Moving on, uh, so if you needed to use SSH for remote access, you'll need to make sure that your SSH services are, are running. So we can check the status of our SSH using system CTL status SSH. And in this case, we have SSH as running. If it wasn't running, you can use uh, system CTL start SSH. So if you're looking to use SSH keys when you access your, when you're accessing your Power OS device, you need to generate an SSH key pair and then use that for authentication and also configure your uh, SSH D config file. Now, I have another video, that's our whole video on how to generate the keys and then, and then also how to configure the files to enable that access using keys, to enable authentication using the keys. I'll, I'll leave a link in my description on how to accomplish that. Let's move on to the next step. So the next thing to do is You'll need to install any common tools that you use. For instance, if you use HTOP to look at your running processes, you'll need to install HTOP. The command is sudo apt install HTOP. Press Y for yes. And that's done. And now I can use HTOP here. And I can quit. So for any tools we want to install, we can use the sudo apt install command. The other thing you might want to install is a VPN. If you're looking to use VPN on this system, you'll need to install VPN. Again, I have a video on how to install free VPN on your machine. The next step or the next thing you might want to do is to customize your bash prompt and also to create your own aliases. So if you want to check what you have as far as aliases are concerned, just type alias. And this is what we have right now. If you wanted to do your own, let's see what we can do. Let's say if you wanted something that does ls-alt, that sorts based on the most recent file, we can say alias alias now let's call it lt here lat and then this is going to be ls dash lt now we can use it and we can check uh aliases see if it's listed and it's right here the next step is to configure backups. If you need to configure backups of a file or directory, you'll need to use a tool such as rsync and you'll need to install that. So let's do sudo apt install rsync. Okay, once we have that installed, we can see how we can use it. Let's just clear this. Now to use rsync, just you'll need a source and destination file or directory. Just type the command rsync, rsync, uh, dash a for archive, b for verbose, h for human readable. Source is, let's say, home, you know, you know, documents. And let's say destination is media. We're back. We are backing this to media. Let's call it backup uh, documents. That's how you'll do the backup. Finally, if this is a virtual machine you're running on either 
uh, VirtualBox, or if you're running it on a VMware workstation, you'll need to install the VirtualBox guest additions or VMware tools. This will allow you to get better performance and functionality of your virtual machine. So that's all for this video. Those are the different steps you'll need to do or take once you install a new PowerOS machine. I hope this information has been helpful. I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.